Being an American, I'm not really sure what the obsession is with royalty, but many people like them, especially the English. We Americans revolted against England, as Homer Simpson so eloquently puts it, to get the king of England out of our face. But now we have a new king, whose first speech will be analyzed the world over. Does it measure up to the speech in the film The King's Speech? Let's find out! I can't imagine what it must be like to be born into royalty. That kind of life, for all the material wealth it provides, must be so devoid of any real human interaction. For a lowly commoner, the world of the royals is very distant, so imagining the inner workings of their daily lives is a difficult task to capture on film. The expectations that are put upon them are even more incomprehensible. It's with this theme that the King's Speech develops its narrative. The story opens with Albert, who later becomes King George VI, played by Colin Firth, getting set to give a speech at Wembley. He's unable to get through it as he has a terrible stutter. He's pretty much given up on his problem when he decides to see Lionel, played by veteran actor Jeffrey Rush, a speech therapist who normally works with children. This may be by far Jeffrey Rush's best performance. This all occurs on the backdrop of World War II as Germany threatens to invade Poland. Entering into war is a difficult task for any leader, but it's even more difficult when that leader lacks the self-confidence as it does in this film. Having to give such an important speech is made even more difficult with the stutter. Lionel is pretty unconventional in his methods as a speech therapist. Whereas others treated the king at a distance, Lionel takes on a more personal and hands-on approach. He compels the king to actually think about his own life and who he is as a human. He also provides a little psychology when he tells the king that no one is born with a stutter. He even calls him Birdie, essentially placing him on equal footing. Hey, maybe this guy was an American after all! What makes the king's speech good cinema is that it doesn't tell a simple story about how difficult it is to be a monarch. Instead, the film shows the humanity in it all. It brings down royalty onto our level and humanizes them. The king has a problem just like everyone else. In one scene, George V dies, everyone is standing around stoic and emotionless, because that's what they were taught to do. David, played by Guy Pearce, who becomes the King of England, but abdicates the throne to marry an American woman, can't stand around emotionless, and breaks down crying and embraces his mother, but she rebuffs him with a look of disgust. It's these kinds of scenes that show the dehumanization of royalty, perhaps why we Americans don't really understand that obsession. The King's speech was very competently written and shot. The art direction stands out, especially with intricate set pieces and design that aren't really found in today's movies. I was surprised to find that the screenplay was entirely original and not based on a book as it was so competently written. The difficulty with making a movie about someone with a stutter is that it becomes easily memeable, but the direction gave a serious psychological issue the levity and care that it needed. A good score only added to the film. The acting in the film is also quite good. Colin Firth gave a great performance and showed the gravity of the character's issues quite well. The rest of the supporting cast didn't get much screen time. The always wonderful and quirky Helena Bonham Carter played Elizabeth, but didn't really get nearly enough screen time, which is a shame as I always enjoy her performances. Her character comes from a pretty dysfunctional family, but she is probably the only functional normal one here. This would have been a great opportunity for Helena Bonham Carter to show off her acting chops. It's worth mentioning that the future Queen Elizabeth II is featured in the film in her youth. The cinematography shines in on these scenes by performing some simple camera tricks to feature more prominently the future queen. I thought that was a nice touch and provided some background on Queen Elizabeth's younger days. Since her passing, we've seen a lot of footage from those early days, and this film portrays it quite well in comparison. Lately, I'm finding myself attracted to films with good character development. The King's Speech was a good exposition of this. The film had a properly written character arc that focused on the more human interactions. Relationships and stories become more interesting when each character has a struggle. A lot of films of the past decade contain characters with no flaws or even struggles. It's why even a seemingly boring movie like King's Speech is less boring than some of the films coming out in 2022. Another film released that same year that focused deeply on character development and human relationships was The Social Network. Although strikingly different in tone and time period, both films focused on how humans relate to one another and how we navigate the world around us. I remember these two movies being highly regarded at the time and even garnering a few Oscar nods. Films like these aren't really being released anymore these days, signifying a tonal shift in cinema that may be losing sight of what makes movies great. Overall, there are a lot of films that deal with complex medical or psychological topics. 
but none are produced with as much humanity as with the king's speech. The tone of the film was perfectly set against a difficult situation, a new leader with medical issues on the eve of one of the biggest wars the world had ever seen. Humanizing characters and showing their struggles as individuals makes them relatable and ultimately likable. Hollywood writers need to go back and analyze films like The King's Speech so they can learn how a story and character arc works because I don't think anyone has told this new batch of writers. If you're looking to get your fix on British royalty, this is a good film to get you started. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content.